Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about the wide versatility of Mohus Mesh presented by Pierre Gombo. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. This webinar will be recorded and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees, but also will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. You can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box. We'll be selecting your questions in the last 15 minutes and we'll be asking them to Pierre. The panelists for this webinar are Mario Quiñones, myself, Victor Paredes, and Pierre Gombo. Also, we'll encourage you to share uh, your Instagram stories with the tags, hashtag webinar, hashtag Mohonimation, at Mohonimation, and at Pierre Gombo Art. We'll be sharing your stories if you tag us. Pierre Gombo is a French uh, freelance in the field of motion design and graphic design for over 20 years. Today, he's still French, but also a professional animator who recently worked in, with Couture Saloon for almost two years on the features My Father's Dragon for Netflix and The Puffin Rogues and New Friends, a feature film coming soon. He has developed skills in 2D and 3D hybrid animation thanks to Moho, Photoshop, Cinema 4D, and After Effects. So with that, I will leave you with Pierre and his presentation, The Wide Versatility of Moho's Meshes. Thank you so much. Hey, hello everyone. Let me share my screen. Thank you, Mario, for this uh, quite nice introduction and uh, Thank you. for the great pronunciation of my name, actually. It's perfect. It's almost uh, like you are French guy. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. So, yeah, my name is Pierre Combo. Sorry in advance if my English is kind of broken sometimes, but uh, that's what happens when you learn English with YouTube. So, you will have to do it uh, with it. So today I plan to explain uh, what is the mesh in Moho. So in simple terms, a mesh is a vector shape that allows you to distort uh, images and other vector shapes. So I will start directly with some example, if that's okay with you. So for instance, here I have an example with a bitmap. So let me launch Moho. So the stones you see on screen are just uh, flat images. It's a PSD file, really. Like if I open it in Photoshop, you can see there is a bunch of uh, images, just a bitmap. And when I can, what sorry, I can do in Moho is add a mesh. So some points uh, above the the stone. And when I move those points, I can simulate a 3D effect. So for instance, it gives you this result. So keep in mind, everything is uh, here. It's, uh, it's still a 2D, there is no 2D. So as you can see, it's still flat, like Earth. I'm joking, Earth is a, is a square, as we all know. So I can just move the points of my mesh and it will deform as a bitmap, the image uh, behind. So for instance, if I move those points, as you can see, it changes the overall shape of the image. No, it's broken, but yeah, that pretty much a uh, principle, the basis. So for instance, I have one here. Let me display all of them because why not? So yeah, just moving points really. So it's, that's why um, mesh are simple yet very powerful. It's uh, crazy uh, sometimes what you can do with it. And it works with uh, images, but it also works uh, with a uh, vector drawing, vector shapes. So here, for instance, I drew this magnificent face. It just made of very basic uh, vector points, just some points. And what I did here is uh, I'm adding a mesh, but just to animate uh, some parts of the face, like the eyes, uh, the eyes, the eyebrows. So I did drew a shape just for the eyebrow one other just for the eye very basic shape you don't have to go very deep in detail and now what i can do it's either move the point from the drawing like i want the eyebrow to go higher i select the point from the drawing for the eyebrow i move them 
I can do it this way, but what I can do is instead move the mesh. So what I mean is like I select the point here from the eyebrow, from the mesh for the eyebrow and eyebrows. And when I move them, you see it also moves the points from the drawing. So it's a way to animate it, to animate. And what is great about it, it's like, because here my drawing is so basic, so it, you could do without a, a mesh. But let's say I've got a plenty of points, like uh, here I have six points. But let's say we are crazy, we want a, a lot of points. Now, if I want to move the eyebrow, I can select the point and move them. But let's say I want a curvature, I will have to move like that, then like that, then going crazy because it will take me forever. So what I can do instead is use the mesh. So once again, the same shape than before. And now, let's say I go on this frame, I move those points. As you can see, it deforms all the points of the drawing. So I don't have to deal with moving every point so one by one. Here the mesh is very, bas is very basic, but if I add more points, uh, where we see, did, 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 did. Oh, okay, I'm not on frame zero. I can add a couple of points here, and I have even more control over the shape of the eyebrow, the mesh, and so of the eyebrow. So yeah, it's really cool uh, for a very detailed uh, drawing. For instance, this guy, the Vitruvian man, it's a default character in a Moho satin. You can find it in the library. It's made of the same thing. It's drawn only with a vector shape. So it's made of points. Everything is made of points, I guess. Yeah. And here there is a mesh also that move every uh, that moves every point uh, at once. So instead of selecting like uh, the eyebrow plus the eye from the drawing, I can simply uh, choose uh, some points on the mesh. For so for instance, uh, those points. And when I move them, it moves the eye, the eyebrow, everything. Uh, attached, deformed by this mesh. So yeah, that's a really basic explanation about uh, meshes. What you can do with them, with a with a vector drawing and with the bitmap image, like a PNG image, a JPEG, and all that kind of stuff. So maybe some examples uh, could be helpful to get the idea. So here is an animation I did from a, a great illustrator. I'm not sure of his name. I think it's Darren M. A. Calvert. Sorry if I mispronounce it. Mispronounce it. Pronounce it wrong. So here the idea is the same. It's an illustration. It's a PSD I made from the original illustration. And I split up each part, like the body, the face, and even the iris. The most you don't have to go that deep in details. It just I like to have more control. So, for instance, I want this this ear to be to move independently independently of the rest of the head. So I did two layers. But frankly, you could go with one if you are lazy or don't have time or whatever. And then once uh, into Moho, I import my PSD. And I create a mesh for every, uh, almost every of the layers from the PSD. So, for instance, the pizza here, you have the images, the layer from, a, you have the image, the layer from a Moho, uh, Photoshop, sorry, but also a mesh just for it. So it's animated. If I move the point, it will move the point only uh, from the pizza, but not from the body because the body is using another mesh. Mesh. And that's pretty much it. That's how you uh, I animated it here. I have I have some actions uh, in that case. So an action to rotate the head, so I don't have to manually move the point uh, during on the timeline. So what I did here is I created an action for this bone. So if I go to its action, you can see the bone is rotating, and also the points for the mesh for the face are moving so it is this one the head it's here so as you can see it's moving the points and some uh, other stuff like the eye i think the mesh for the eye yeah 
And what I can do is tweak, if I want to tweak a little, even more the movement of the head, I can go on this keyframe, 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 use the mania tool and move the points I want to move around. I mean, I could move them point by point, but it will take me forever once again. So here it's very useful to use the mania tool, this little guy here. You choose a size like something like that. And let's say I want to move more this eye and more move more the nose or something like that. It's very rough for now, it's just for a demonstration. But now, as you can see, it's moving more, moving more, and I will also fix the iris so it follows. It follows closely. And as you can see, now it's moving like that. And if I go back in a, into my main uh, timeline, my main uh, animation. Let me hide the mesh. As you can see now, when I move the head, I use uh, this bone to rotate the head. The modification I did to my mesh are applied and I can use it here, I can use it like that and move it like that. And that's pretty much it. Not, uh, it's all messed up now, <laughs> but it's okay. Okay, I did that for an illustration, but once again, it works with any kind of image. So for instance, here I did use a, a photograph, a photography of uh, Jacques Chirac, a previous uh, French president. And it looks bored just as you uh, with my webinar, <laughs> if not. So yeah, same thing here. It's a photography split up in, Mo in Photoshop, sorry. So the face, the eyes. And once it's imported into Moho, I did the same thing. So uh, I did I added a mesh for, uh, not for a lot of stuff here. I think just for the head, the hand, hand and the body. The body. So the, because you, you don't have to use one mesh per image, you can use a, a mesh for like 10, 10 images at once. It depends on what you want. For instance, here's the mesh for the head. It's moving the head, but also the eye, I think. Let me show. Oh, no, no, sorry, my bad. <laughs> I could move the, the eye using uh, this mesh too, but it's not the case. So forget what I say. But yeah, here is the same principle. The mesh is deforming the, the image for the face and everything. And once again, I, I did create an action like a bone for moving the head up down, left, right, I think. Yeah. Let me turn off the camera real quick because it is shaking. Okay, cool. So if I go here, as you can see, I have an action to move up and down the head and left and right. And if I go to this action, you see I'm moving my bone and I'm moving the points into this action. So the point of the, the points of the mesh for the face. So once again, let's use the menu tool. I'm going crazy. And now, Every time I will, let me go back to the main, main uh, uh, timeline, main line. If I move the bone here, you have a crazy Chirac, crazy Chirac, crazy Chirac. Took. So it works with picture and yeah, so I won't do all of them, but that's the same idea here. It's just a still image. I split up in Photoshop and moved each part, the head and everything uh, using mesh. So that's uh, the basis of the mesh in Moho. And now what I wanted to do to have a, a, more, a more concrete example is to use it for, a, for the scene. I, I drew it real quick uh, last week. I'm not a quite good uh, graphics designer. <laughs> so it's quite basic uh, drawing. It's just a pixel a pixel image. You have the foreground, a reference, because what I want to do here is to add a river and some waterfalls animated in a Moho using mesh. So you have this guy, you have the background, just four layers, three in fact. 
So what I did is I um, import the, the IDs to get this result. So no further ado, you get what uh, what we are going to do. So the three water three waterfalls and the river I made from an animated texture. It's just an image, a looping image, but you will see. And the idea is to deform it. So using the mesh, so I can sculpt the texture. I can sculpt the waterfall, the river. But let me show you an example. So first, what I did for the waterfall, like uh, the waterfall, it, uh, not, not this one, the texture, yeah. So the waterfall, it just want, it's just an image. It's a PSD file. It's a, it could be a PNG. And what I did is I imported this waterfall directly into Moho into a new document. I will show you this document. It should be too much file here. Too much files. Okay, this one. So what I did here is a sound, it's a looping animation of this flat image. Because actually, what I could do is let me reopen this file. The more basic way should could be to just drop this uh no wrong file. I could drop my texture directly into uh, this uh, this scene and animate it from here, but you you will have way less uh, control over it. So okay, good file this time. So I could put like put it in a group real quick. Like waterfall because I like to have clear files, so I rename name everything. So I will have it. Let's create a, a quick mask real quick, like something like that. Tum tum tum. We will all use it as a mask and just display this image. Ah, sorry, wrong setting. Uh, masking to hide all. Okay, cool. To mask, keep it invisible. Okay. And what I could do is animate from here. So I can put my waterfall here, create a cycle. I do it real quick just to get the idea. Let's put it in linear. And okay, I have a, an amazing waterfall, let's say it. And now I can scale down this waterfall, put it something like around here okay it sucks we all agree it's not good it doesn't look good so when why i'm doing here instead is i'm creating it takes a bit more time but frankly i think it's it worth it so i put my waterfall in a new document i create my loop from here that's pretty much the same thing and what i do now it's I export this animation as a in a image sequence. So image sequence, a PNG image. I put it in a folder, so it should be this folder. Uh, waterfall texture, t -t -t okay. I press OK. Mo will export all the images for this animation. So now I can close this document. And if I go to the folder, as you can see, I have a sequence, image sequence. It's looping indefinitely. And now I will import this uh, animation into Moho. So I go here. I go to image sequence because that's what it is. I'm, yeah, I'm in the right folder. I click on the first frame. Let's name it waterfall loop. OK, loop. I just want it to play forever, so I go into the layer settings, go to image, and click this loop movie indefinitely. So now, indeed, it's moving indefinitely. And now, let's put it in a folder like this one. And now, what I can do is create a mesh to deform to deform uh, this image. So I will create a new vector. I will call it waterfall loop mesh because it is what it is and i will draw uh, a grid so i go to the draw shape tool select a grid and i want a three by eight grid and this grid will cover the will cover the surface of the of the texture so say 
took the idea is to have the mesh to fit as close as possible with the image. So what I mean is to let me remove everything behind so we can focus on it. Yeah. So the mesh will will fit as close as possible with the texture so you have a better control. That's the idea. I will apply the mesh to this waterfall animation. So I go to image, I set the smart warp layer, it's the name of the mesh, you can call it as you want. Let's call it a mesh. I apply it and now nothing has changed, but it's non normal because the mesh is uh, hasn't been uh, hasn't have been edited yet. So for instance, if I go on my mesh, I use a minute tool and I stretch the waterfall for something like that, something something really real, realistic. As you can see now, my animated texture, the image sequence, is deformed by the mesh. So you have way more controls than uh, the previous technique of just animate, animate the uh, waterfall directly into uh, the, sun, the scene. So yeah, now what I want is to know what I am doing. <laughs> da, 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 da. Okay. I'm looking for my reference. So the reference is just a layer, a, a, a crude drawn a layer I did in Photoshop just to get an idea of the shape I want for the waterfalls. So for instance, we are doing the one in the middle. So now I have everything set up. I can start to sculpt my mesh so it fits with the, the reference. So to do that, I go on frame one because on frame zero, it's just for design, you don't animate on frame uh, zero. So I go on frame, on frame one, and now I will start by scaling down the mesh. So just to get a quick uh, size to uh, quickly uh, make it the good size, like uh, something like that. So you get a quite good looking, but quite boring to uh, waterfall. So what we can do here is use the mesh to give some uh, gravity to the waterfall. So the water, when it falls, it goes faster and faster, just like in real life. And so to do that, what I can do is select the point of my mesh, the grid that I drew uh, before, which is true, and move the point like something like that. And you all fit in a way the distance each time. So let's say something like that, yes, uh, yes, then something like that, and something like that. It's a quick version just to show you, but yeah, that's the idea. And now I did it. As you can see, the water is falling way faster as it falls down. So it simulates gravity in just uh, some clicks, so it's cool. And from here, you can go more in detail and shape more closely uh, to the reference. So I do it this way, just moving the point like that. And I will do the same here, like something like that. Something not like that. Yeah, something like that. Same thing here. You don't have to go in detail is in that case, I mean, because uh, it won't be a true and you won't see it once it's animated. Okay, let me fix this. Maybe fix that. Maybe follow the curvature more, like something like that. Okay, cool. Let me hide my reference. And ta da, you have a such gorgeous waterfall. Just using a mesh, a rather, rather basic mesh because I've got like a, so few points, points, but you can go crazier, add more points. Just remember the more points, the more control, but also the more tedious it could be to move uh, like uh, 2000 points. You don't want that. So keep it simple. Anyway, you can uh, add more points. If I want more points here, I can add them uh, later. I won't do that here because uh, uh, I'm already. Uh, Alpha at Alpha as a webinar, so let's speed run it. So yeah, that's the idea for the waterfall. I won't do the two other because I cheat. I already did them before. I just want to show you how I did them in that case. So same thing, it's a mesh with animated texture. Just for that one, 
for the, the split of the stream of the water. What I did, I could have make, uh, made a, a mask to hide it. But what I did here instead is I draw the mesh with a hole in, in it. So yeah, as you can see, there is a hole here. So it, every, everywhere where is the color, the white color, the image behind will be, will be shown, the waterfall. But where there is a hole, uh, you won't see uh, the texture. So what I mean is this. Uh, yeah. You can sh see the image everywhere, but here. And the good thing about it is also it's it stretch the texture. It force it to uh, follow the shape of the mesh. So not only you have a mask for free, <laughs> but also the water is voila, is following the the sorry the shape of the mesh. <laughs> So the river is falling here, and uh, it it doesn't stay. Uh, it follows the shape. Just open your eyes and take a look. You you will see what I mean. <laughs> so it follows like that. Once again, you you will for a better result. You could add uh, more points here and there, but for the sake of demonstration, it's it's enough, I think. And finally, this one I think yeah here it's just. Uh, just to show you, it's maybe not very noticeable, but what I did here is I tried to simulate like a volume in the water, like it's uh, the background is made of rocks and not flat rocks, so it's uh, it's uh, messy. And so I wanted to simulate it by moving the point inside. And so imagine there is a big stone here and there is a hole behind. The river is falling like that, and tam tam, like uh, in uh, on stairs. So you can do that, do this too with the mesh. So it's uh, cool. Let's say it. You can simulate, a, give some depth to a flat image. So yeah, 3D with a 2D image. It's a, uh, it's nice. I think. Uh, do do Yeah, let's say something like that. Okay, that's the idea. Now you get it. So the waterfall not only they are magnificent, but they are done. So it's cool. And now what I want to do is to add a river. So for the river, it's basically the same principle, the animated texture, texture I did for the waterfall, but with a tweak, with a twist, sorry. So my river is called foam top, not river, because it doesn't make sense. So once again, it's just a PSD file with some layers in a smart layers, da, 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 in case I want to, to, to edit it. Once again, I import it into a new document in Moho, so that's what I did here. But this time, so it's also moving. It's a loop of the of the layers of the PSD files, so it's moving indefinitely. But what I did here to give more life to the textures is uh, to use a mesh above it. So once again, I have a, a drawn a mesh using the draw shape tool with the grid. You will use it a lot, I think, if you're doing mesh in Moho. And I added some points, and this mesh is applied to my textures of the river, the texture of the river. And I'm deforming the top of the texture using points animation on the mesh. So as you can see, it's random animation. I moved the point. So it deforms the, the texture. I did the same for the, this little guys here for the form on the side. I wanted it to move slower than the main animation. That's why it's on the different layer, layers. And it also has its own uh, mesh. So same thing, it's deforming everything. And from here, I export this animation as an image sequence. So same thing, I go here. I won't do it here because it's already done. And you will get this result, so an image sequence. I like to sing when I click on stuff. Okay, so now I can import this image sequence into Moho, just like I did previously for the waterfall. So I go to image sequence, I go to the correct folder, I click on the first frame, it's looping. Same thing, we want it to loop indefinitely, so we click it. Let's now name it 
river loop took let me put it in the correct folder so it will be here okay let's add this and this i just want maybe just no frankly i can keep everything okay so my river is here it's just a flat image uh, just an image sequence so as for the waterfall what i'm going to do here is to draw a mesh above it so just create a new vector shape a vector layer sorry let's call it river loop mesh once again as you know it i will draw a shape with the green and this time i want a 10 by 4 grid actually i will need more points but for the sake of the demonstration i will go uh, with a more basic uh, grid so let me quickly center it as usual make it fit close to the to the texture okay cool we can display back our stuff even the little bushes okay so what we want we want now is to have the river to come toward us towards the camera with a perspective so to fake a 3d effect to give it a, to give the river a 2d effect so what you can do is uh, to begin with is to rotate the mesh Ah, sorry, I forgot to apply it to the image sequence. So I go to the settings of the image sequence. I go to image and I select my river loop mesh as a smart warp. Okay, cool. Now, if I go back to my mesh, I rotate it. It should work. Why is it? Ah, uh, no. What? 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 Wait, look good. <laughs> good. Yeah, okay. I know what I did wrong. I rotate the layer and not the point. It doesn't work. If you rotate the layer of the shape, it won't work. So uh, it's a good lesson. Uh, you, if you edit the mesh by moving the point of the mesh and not moving, uh, you don't move the layer, never. Or maybe in some case, I don't know, but not here. So yeah, go back to our mesh. We select on the point. We rotate, it works. We rotate it this way so the river is coming toward us. So it's a good start. And now to simulate the perspective, I can do it the painful way. So let's move it, it like that and then move the point one by one. And now it's, it's hell on earth. So I won't do that. It will take me forever. So what I'm going to do instead is uh, use the perspective points tool this uh, little buddy here i click on it i select all my point points i'm sure i'm on frame one and now do, 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 do. moho do the artwork for me so it's nice uh, from him so okay i got the basic shape and now from here i can start to sculpt more in detail the river so as you can see it works at least it's moving in the good direction but what i want now is to have the river to follow as closely as possible the shape of the riverbed like this curvature here and the curvature here so what i'm going to do to do that on oh, sorry in advance it it will be boring let's say it but <laughs> i will try to do it as fast as i can by the way, if there is a faster way, um, le, tell me. <laughs> I'm open to suggestion. But yeah, what I'm going to do is select each line of point, each lines of point. Maybe move this one here because I will need to have more control over here on this curvature. Okay, let's do the same here. You don't have to go too deep into the details it's not important for now just get the overall shape it's the more important part uh sorry i wish we had some background music in the meantime but no you will have to suffer with me we move those points okay almost done those point two okay maybe real quick this one like that and maybe move it a bit lower to something like that cool okay 
I will need way more point on this part, but it doesn't matter. We won't do it now. Let's cheat and add those point instead here. Okay, just those points and I think we will be good. Okay, cool. And now as you can see, the texture is following more closely the shape of the riverbed. So it's cool. It's really, really cool. Okay, cool. Something like that. <coughs> Sorry, my, my bad. And yeah, that's the idea. That's so you can sculpt quite quickly a river using the mesh. So it's cool because it really follows closely as a shape. You don't have a, a two square shape. Does that make sense? And what you can do, let's say you want to give us uh, some more depth to the river, like is there is another waterfall part here. You can move the point here and maybe just source points, like something like that, maybe a little bit more source points. Let me put this one back. Okay, something like that, maybe a little bit more here and here. And now, you have an impressive effect of 3D. <laughs> Sorry, I did something wrong here. Yeah. You can give some more depth to uh, to the waterfall. So actually this one should be more central like that. So it follows the perspective line. And yeah, you have like a, a hole or something in the river. If you want that, I mean, you are you don't have to. And now we have everything together. We can hide this uh, horrible separation by using some effects. Here I just uh, animated uh, some particles. So it just uh, so all these little points and I animated some, uh, where is it? I think that's this one. No, this one maybe. Yeah, this one. It's just some vector shape with a brush. It's really basic. As you can see, it's really basic stuff, but it does a trick, so it's good. And yeah, I think that's that's it for this one. That's how you can use mesh also to uh, to create to deform animated texture. I think there is a lot of potential potential with it. You can use it on character if you have I don't know a character made of lava or stuff or or something else I don't know made of water. You could use this technique too on the character. I should give it a try sometime. But yeah, yes, I think that's it for uh, this one. And how much time do we have? We have we have 20 minutes. It's uh, 19 minutes too much because I, this one will take me like two minutes to show. But yeah, what I wanted to show you is uh, what I call meshception. It's not a, only a difficult name to to pronounce, but it sucks. But uh, we will do with it for now. The idea is you can use a mesh on a image or a vector drawing, but you can also use a mesh over another mesh because a mesh is a vector shape, so it makes sense. So what I mean is, uh, let me, yeah. So here, for instance, I have uh, this image of a lava. So it's just a flat image. And on it, I applied a mesh made of some points, this one. So it's just a some points, uh, some points here and there. It's very basic. And with it, I can move the lava behind the image. So I can make it uh, rotate it. It's just a looping animation. <coughs> Sorry. And what I can do now is add more layer, uh, layers of animation by using more meshes. So what I mean is I did a new layer with uh, another mesh, another vector shape, really. So made of point, da, da, da. and here I did, uh, let me enable it, yeah. So what I did here is another animation and follow me closely here because the idea is I have this animation on this mesh, but this animation is also deformed by this second mesh. So this animation is applied to this mesh and both of them are applied to the lava. 
So now, as you can see, not only I have the rotation for the first mesh, uh, I can't, uh, the, those points, but also from those points, so you have, you blend animation and it's cool because you can decide to disable uh, just the rotation or disable just the scanning. For instance, I can say, I can use only one of the layer of animation and you can go even higher with a self layer. So in that case, it's another grid, I think. Yeah. And, ah, oh, sorry, I need to enable it. And here it's random animation. It's just doing stuff like that. It's very uh, art contemporain. It's move, uh, it's doing some stuff, yeah. So this animation is applied to this layer that is applied to this layer and the three of them are applied to this uh, image. It gives a duck, a duck, uh, your head will hurt <laughs> because of it. So yeah, that's the idea. You have many layers of animation thanks to the mesh with uh, three different meshes. And now the animation is done, I can use it on any other image, let's say uh, the water, uh, you have a water image. That's it, I just apply uh, the mesh to this image too, and my animation is applied to this layer too. This is layer, sorry. And same thing here for a more uh, trippy one. You have uh, many layers of control of animation, thanks to the many layer of many layers of mesh. So if it is about, it is about this one and this one, I'm not sure if, if it works. Yeah, it works. Uh, yeah, it works. It only applies uh, this mesh. So I can disable this one. So there is no mesh in action. And if I enable only the first one, look, it will apply the animation of uh, only this mesh. So it's interesting. And I can put back this one if I want. And yeah, I'm not sure. Could we animate it? Uh, it's a mute channel, I'm not sure. Whatever, it's not important. Okay, that's the idea about the meshception. It's a terrible name, I'm sorry. And with it, I think I'm done with my presentation. Unless if we have some time for questions and more example, you tell me, Mario. Hey, Pierre, thank you so much for this very <laughs> insightful presentation. I know there was a lot of content that you wanted to share. Yeah. Uh, but also, we really appreciate everyone's interest. Everybody's really excited with, with the webinar. And um, cool. we ask uh, from where people were watching this, uh, this webinar, for example, Romy from Philippines, John Joe from South Korea, Jay from Glasgow, Limbro from Mexico, Wolf from UK, London. Somebody said New York. Uh, uh, oh. So thank you all. <laughs> um, so we'll, yeah. let's start with some questions. For example, Janice, uh, hi, and Janice from NC. I told a newbie, can you use a mesh without bones as well as with bones, or do you always need to add bones? Thanks. Oh, no, no, you, good, good question, actually. No, no, you can use it uh, in both ways. Uh, like for the waterfalls and the rivers, there is no bone. But uh, think of the mesh as a vector shape. It's it's a vector shape, but with a special ability. That's it. Here, uh, let's go with the basic stuff. Like, uh, do, 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 do. let me go back to my mesh option, the lava. Uh, so as you can see, for the mesh, I will draw a mesh. But as you can see, just a vector layer, vector layer. So it's the classic uh, shape. I can draw it above it. It's really basic one. I apply it to my image. Uh, took. And now I can move my point because it's a sh it's a vector shape really, uh, but with the ability to deform stuff. <laughs> but I can also add the bonds if I want, like uh, any uh, regular vector layer. So let's create a bond group. Let's add, a, I don't know, one here and maybe another here. And I will tell uh, the vector shape, the mesh, to use this bone to move those points and this bone to move those points. And if I go here and I move my points, 
as you can see, it's dirty the way I did it. But this ID, this, this is the ID. As you can see, I, I still have the, all the possibility of the bonds, so I can scale, uh, rotate, move the bonds. And because it's applied on my mesh, which is just a vector shape, a magic vector shape, uh, you can use bond yeah, on it. So, uh, sorry, I just finish with it. Like I move it like that, rotate, t -t -t -t, crazy stuff. And I still have control of the on the mesh, so my bonds are moving, but I, I still can still uh, move the points. I should have added more points, but yeah, just so you get the idea. But yeah, yeah, you can use a mesh with bonds or with the bonds. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. And there's also another question. Um, what is the difference between the rectangular meshes and the other one? Uh, you mean the triangulate bond uh, mesh, I think? Yes. That's a technical question. <laughs> the, there is, I know there is some difference. I'm not sure which one. Uh, I mean, I I know the difference, but it's too technical, I think, uh, for my poor uh, knowledge of English to explain it this way. But basically, uh, the quad mesh, I think that the, the name is there is a quad mesh and the triangulate mesh. This is here. You will have, there is some advantages and disadvantages for each, but frankly, I w it will be tricky to explain it uh, like that. Could it be the theme of uh, next webinar? <laughs> it could be, okay. be good. I I could do a demonstration, but I think I will I will it will not be clear. So no, it not. Uh, there is a difference, <laughs> but this is the same principle. You can use a quad mesh for to deform an image, and you can use a triangle triangle mesh. Actually, yeah. Sorry, I will show a quick example. Uh, the stone I did at the beginning, uh, the stones. Yeah, it's. Uh, triangulate a mesh because you have a triangle and now frankly you know what no, no, it's a terrible idea <laughs> I want to know how to explain it <laughs> oh, we can we can explain that in, in the video comments later yeah um, thank you but it's a good question and i will watch it <laughs> because I, I still want to know what is the difference between and when, by the way how do you use the create smart warp layer menu uh what do you mean like the one under the draw menu uh da, 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 da. here's a triangulate to the mesh no um, mm -hmm. uh like that you click it you draw your shape and you click triangle to the mesh and as you can see it mm -hmm. create tri triangles i'm not sure this is the question yeah mm-hmm yeah, no, because that, it helps you to quickly triangulate or divide right. your right. Yeah, yeah, right. It's even mandatory if you want to create, uh, not mandatory, but it helps a lot if you want to triangulate your mesh. But in the case of a quad mesh, so I really love my lava example. <laughs> so here I will create a quad mesh. In that case, you don't have to triangulate you I, I could triangulate it i think it's automatically triangulated uh, but you don't have to it could be used as a mesh because there is only four points that's the difference between a quad mesh and a triangulate mesh it's a number uh, you have to have an even number of points i think like if i have five points i don't think i can use it as a is it possible i don't know <laughs> uh, yeah but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I promise you I know what I do, but not yet. But yeah. um, not yet so another to... question, um, Pierre from Miranda. Okay. She's asking, in the beginning you showed the face with eyebrows and you had a thick blue line around the mesh. How did right. you make that line? Uh, it's automatically done by a Moho when you draw your mesh. For instance, here I am on my mesh layer. And if I draw a new shape, as you can see, it's create automatically uh, this line. Usually, I make it way thinner because this way you you can see uh, more clearly what you are doing. But this line is just a stroke because once again the mesh is a classic vector shape. 
so it has a, a stroke applied to it but you can hide it it's not mandatory to uh, to have this uh, this stroke to use the mesh it just helps when uh, to see uh, what you are doing because you have but it's uh, it's created automatically uh, by uh, moho um, All right. Another question. Sure. Um, can you add points to a mesh? You can, of course, of course, of course. Because I'm lazy, I'm going to reuse the same example that I did before. But yeah, yeah, of course, I've got this mesh uh, here. Uh, sorry. Yeah, this one. And let's say I want to add more control uh, over this part. What I can do is go on frame zero because this is a frame you design your shape. And I use the add point tool, this little guy here. And let's say I want two more points here. I simply add them and now, as you can see, I can animate them because of course I already animated my shape before them. They are not moving, so I will need to, uh, to fix uh, their position. But yeah, yeah you can add uh, as many points as you, as you want. Let's go crazy if I want to split it up like that. And now I animate them. Yeah, it works. Kind of, because I should also add more points here, but whatever. But yeah, yeah, you can add points. You can even remove them. There is no reason. Let's say you want. And as you can see, Moho automatically uh, recalculates the shape. So I delete it. Is OK, I will retrangulate. And yeah, you can add remove points uh, as as you wish. Just uh, be sure to be on frame zero because it won't work. Uh, if I'm in animation, I, you can see as you can see, I don't have the ability to add points. So yeah. Tuk, tuk. Mm -hmm. Um. Another question from Limbo: uh, What's the best way to structure a mesh? Do you use drawing references or three D meshes? uh that's actually another good question uh in my head the way i do it i think like in 3d you know the topology in 3d uh let me go back to my uh, stones tick 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 so in a way i think of the shape like the hard edge of the shape because what you want with the mesh is uh to deform the hard, hard edges of the shape i'm not sure if it's a good wording but like for instance, here on my stone, uh, I have the outside, the contour, but also I have this strong line here. Let me add a layer to draw over. Like I have this line here and this line here, here. For me, this is the topology of the stone in that case, because it is the stone. And that's what I keep in mind. Uh, like I, I know this part, should be in front when I will animate it. So it makes sense to create a line here, but I won't add a point here because it's kind of flat surface. There is no hard edges. So, I mean, I can add points here if I want to have two more control here, why not? And now I added this point, I can select those and move them like that. And now as you can see, it moves, uh, it moves up the, this part. But in my opinion, it's not necessary to have points here because it's a flat surface. Surface, You don't have a hard edges like uh, this part or let's say this part. I hope you can see my cursor. But that, that's the idea. And same thing for a face. You think about the, the nose, the, the edge of the nose. But for the cheeks, you don't care so much because a, cheeks, a cheek is flat. So let me go back to my uh, Jacques Chirac. Tick, tick, tick. So here I created a lot of points, but uh, to be honest, this animation is quite old. It was uh, when I was learning the mesh, so maybe I did way too much point. But as you can see, for the cheeks, I have like one point because I don't need a lot. Just think like a, a 3D shape, really, like a topology, uh, the topology in 3D. And same thing for the hard edge, hard edge, hard edges. Like for the ear, this is, this is a hard edge. For the eyebrow, this is kind of a hard edge. And uh, the eyelid, the, uh, the, the skin doesn't need a lot of points. So yeah, I hope it's uh, answered your question. <laughs>
Yes, definitely. And cool. uh, by the way, uh, did you use meshes in the movies you have worked on? Uh, yeah, yeah, in both. We use it in My Father's Dragon for, uh, I think I've got some example here, examples. Yeah, uh, we use it for, uh, it won't spoil the story, so I think I can show us this scene. It's going fast here, but as you can see, the characters are animated by some talented people at Cartoon Saloon. It's an Android animation. And the jar is made in Moho. And it's going really fast here, but let me open the file. In fact, the, the jar, the bottle, call it as you want, is made of a PSD file, like uh, I showed in the previous uh, files. It's made of uh, many layers. And for it, I uh, did use a mesh for uh, just a reference. Yeah. Du, 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 du. I didn't use it a lot on this one, <laughs> only for the top of the lid. So yeah. But yeah, we did use a lot for this kind of, of thing in the movie, along with uh, Vector Palades and a lot of talented people in the Moho team. They are more talented than, than me. Or at least I'm a little bit more. Uh, to, 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 where is the jar here? In that one, yeah, I think it's a better example. Yeah, as you can see here, the mm. but the jar is animated using mesh. So I'm using I created an action for that one. So if I go into this bone and I go to its action, let me hide everything else. Uh, to, 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 to. Ah, okay, I can remove it. So as you can see, I have a full rotation of the jar using only um, a mesh, uh, which is here, I guess. So there is a mesh for the front of the jar, one for the background and two for the lid, for the top. Uh, something around here, uh, this one, yeah. And same thing, I did a mesh uh, for each layer, but you can go crazy and create one mesh for uh, two or more layers at once, but you will have less control. It. So it's up to you. I like to have a control and like that. So yeah, it's cool in my case. And let me show you, I hope it will be smooth enough in streaming. But yeah, you get this result. It's a very quick scene. But yeah, the jar and also the coin is made with more, but with not with a mesh. It's made with another technique I will show you maybe next time. And I just uh, to, 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 let me put it in a new document. If we have, ah, we are already done. Let me do it real quick. So we have this coin, and I created an action to uh, to move it this way, to rotate it and move it uh, in this way. And in that case, there is no, it is totally not related to mesh. So yeah, but I just created many layers of the same images and I rotated, rotated them using this tool, the rotate layer XY, and you can move it. it. And it's a parallax effect with the many layers uh, gives the illusion. It is, a, it has a depth, a depth like a 3D, but it has not, it's still a flat, in, a flat image. So yeah, I just wanted to show it because I'm quite proud, <laughs> proud of this one. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, that's it. We we use it a lot here. Maybe a last one. I will just show the video. Ah, this one is quite cool here. Yeah. So the same principle. It's uh, many layers in the Photoshop file, file uh, deformed with uh, many meshes in a Moho. So the the hand of uh, Boris, the dragon, the hands, hands of Boris are um, once again uh, animated traditionally by another artist. And uh, we added the, another layer for the mesh inside it, for the jar, sorry. And I think that's it. I'm quite in love uh, with this scene too. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, yeah, we use it. And sorry, I have no example in uh, Puffin Rook of a uh, movie but uh, it's not out yet, so I don't think I can show anything anyway. 
<laughs> well, thank you so much, Pierre, for this wonderful presentation. If you watch My Father's Dragon and you see this jar, you remember that Pierre did it. <laughs> so thank you all who joined us today. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you very much, Mario. And all of you, thank you. Merci. <laughs> So before we go, uh, just one last bit of information. The future is the Moho is a powerful 2D animation software that combines the most powerful animation technology with state-of-the-art professional animation tools. Draw, rig, and animate easily. You can create your characters directly in Moho with its vector tools, optimized for animation or import images or Photoshop files, keeping the link and layer structure. For more information, visit mohoanimation.com also, as a reminder, this webinar has been recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So subscribe to receive a notification once it's available to watch. Also follow us in our social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, now on TikTok. And also for more information about Pierre, follow him on his socials, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. So with that, once again, thank you so much, Pierre. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, thank I told you all. <laughs> thank you all. Also. It was very great. Frankly, uh, I enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. it. So cool. <laughs> we all enjoyed it as well. So stay tuned with us for our next events and webinars, promotions, etc. So thank you so much, and see you next time. Bye bye. Bye.